Hello, hello. Welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. We are live again on this Monday night talking with Cedar Ridge this time. We are here with Murphy, their head distiller uh, and guy in charge of putting out all of the fun stuff that Cedar Ridge does. Mm. Before we get over to Murphy, though, Matt, who do we got in the chat? What well, kind of fun? I'm Sarah, and that's Matt, because you've, like, that's what did we I skip do. that process? You I totally did. Yeah, it's cool, but it's fine. They, they think they know who we are by now. This is Sarah. <laughs> That's, I don't know. Matt you just there. say whiskey crusaders, so we don't know. Yeah, it's fine. It's, Matt. it's cool. It's fine. That's Murphy. Try. I had a Discovery Plus ad on my. Oh, I haven't gotten an ad yet. Hmm, weird. Got an ad. I, I gotta see if we get an ad because the ads have the fun of seeing what. Oh yeah, we. Oh, we got a more bueno, less bucks ad tonight. Oh boy, that's exciting. More bueno. I got Domino's Pizza, the piece of the pie rewards. Ooh. Oh, okay. oh, and now a Manscape ad, for two one conditioner. <laughs> Revitalizing for your balls. You oh, and then Aldi. Oh, nice. Aldi next. They Thank want you, you to eat. Lovely. They want me to eat. <laughs> they apparently want you to eat. They want me to spray things. I don't know. It's very strange. Anyways, we got John Cranch, Jerry Black. Oh, uh, let's see here. We also got Travis. There's always we're talking our the patron state of Iowa whiskey in here. It's the reason we know Cedar Ridge so well is because of Travis. So thank you very much, Travis. He sent us many of these bottles, and we appreciate it. We got Spencer Mav. We got Cohen, Scott Movie. Refresh this lovely chat. It all went down the crap around me. All right, I think it's good for the moment. Anyway, so like I said, we've had a lovely weekend and lovely week with us assholes in Russia. Thanks, Putin. Fuck you. So we've got that going for us, and we're going to support the Ukraine. We'll have a fun video about that for you guys tomorrow. But anyway, we're here to talk about Cedar Ridge and this awesome, awesome whiskey out of Iowa. So we're going to let Murphy take it away. We're going to start with the the regular Cedar Ridge. We'll talk about. You want to talk about the history, Murphy? How you guys get into this and all that good fun stuff. We'll turn it over to you and turn yourself um, over by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, and first of all, guys, thanks for having me. Um, always, um, always glad to be talking whiskey with three and and having some fun. So thanks again. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll brush through Cedar Ridge real quick. Um, for those of you who don't know us, uh, we are a, a winery distillery combination in Swisher, Iowa. So small town Iowa, right between Cedar Rapids and Iowa City. Um, when we started off early on, we were much more of a winery than we were a distillery. We kind of used our distillery to uh, dif differentiate our winery. You know, what's going to make people come to our winery? Well, we also have some cool distilled, sprout, distilled spirits that they can try while they come out. So it was kind of like a, a, a niche or a hook that we had to differentiate our winery. Well, um, obviously, uh, over the last 15, 20 years, uh, our, our business model has kind of flip-flopped. And now I would say that we're more of a distillery that differentiates with also being a winery. Uh, but as we taste through some of these products, you will see that that our uh, whiskey slash wine um, combination, it, it really comes together throughout many different products in our portfolio. So, um, yeah, we've, we've been at it for a long time, since 2005. Um, uh, bourbon is our, you know, that's what we're doing. It's our bread and butter. And the reason that we're um, focusing on that is because we're the corn state, you know, here in Iowa. As, as Travis will tell you, if you haven't told you already, um, we grow a lot of corn here. That's what we do. And uh it, it took us a few years to have the light bulb moment. Well, hey, if we're producing all this corn here, why aren't we producing bourbon? And uh, so we started doing that, and people got on board with us. Um, the, the people of Iowa supported right away, and we've been at it ever since. So obviously we've expanded from there, and we're going to try some of those products tonight. Um, many bourbons, a, a single malt called the Quintessential, which is kind of my baby, and we're going to buzz through those as a group here. Yes, I heard you guys are selling. So you guys outsell the big guys, now, which I'm very happy and proud to have you guys that you guys are the number one bourbon in Iowa, which is freaking awesome. Yeah, um, that, that was a, a huge turning point for our company. So um, let's see, it would have been about five years ago now. Um, we wow. kind of had the idea, hey, you know, we, we could probably make a move on, on Jim Beam and Maker's Mark and Bullet and, and see if we can't climb that ladder and become the number one selling bourbon in our, in our state. And about a year after that, we realized, hey, that, that's a little bit more realistic than we thought. And so we really kept uh, building business plans around that. And about two years ago, we accomplished it. And um, so, yeah, we're the number one selling bourbon in the state of Iowa. And we have a, a pretty hefty lead at this point in time. And, and for the millionth time, I'll, I'll say it again, um, but that's entirely due to Iowans supporting our business, what we're doing, yeah. and being on board with it. Without them, we wouldn't be here. So. Yeah, it's pretty. You guys definitely have a heck of a fun. We've known multiple Iowans that have, are definitely big fanboys of you guys. Uh, obviously, Travis introduced to lots of them. Uh, I know we've got Tony and uh, who else is up there? Troy and Matt and several others up there in Iowa. But also, they want to know if they'll have the Slipknot whiskey, if you guys are going to have a cast strength version of that come out at all. 
Um, so I, I, I can't get too far ahead of our plans with Slipknot. Um, you know, that's so clown the, the, um, he's the main person in the band that we operate with Sean. Okay. Um, and he's kind of the creative genius behind it. Um, you know, he obviously uses, uh, us, uh, me, Jamie, a few other people at the distillery to kind of pick our brains, but he, he is the artist. He really does a lot of the work on developing new products and stuff. So I don't want to skip too much of what we've got. Um, coming down the road but i can say this year there will be some releases that that are new um and i'm sure we'll do another cool. one uh, next year as well so there's some some fun big things down the road for uh us and slipknot and i look forward to you know tell you more about them awesome so our buddy uh bill the whiskey dick thanks bill if you guys haven't checked out the whiskey dictionary check out his channel as well and we get cooler runnings coming here i know niggas biglow's in here and then also scott Modi wants to those what products can we get in texas from cedar ridge at the moment any idea um, yeah, so um, we are available in Texas. You know, we're not. Um, so we're really pushing the Midwest hard. That That's where we've got full-time reps in pretty much every state, and I'm sure we're going to talk more about that tonight. With that being said, we do have a couple other states open as well, and Texas is one of them. Um, okay. the, the products that you can find out there are going to be our Iowa bourbon, our quintessential single malt, and then um, anything that we do with Slipknot. Mm. So those are the products okay. that we'll have ava available out there. Um, it's going to be spotty. You can find it around. You know, there's a little bit in Dallas, a little bit in Austin, a little bit in San Antonio. Okay. Um, so we're, a little bit in Houston. We're, so we're around, but uh, it's going to be spotty for sure. Okay. So, so, means you have to go on a whiskey hunt. Darn. That's half yeah, the fun. Exactly, right? <laughs> so, Keeping your eye out, right? I am. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's a good this is a nice classic bourbon. It really is. I like the. Yeah. The so you want to start with uh, talking about what makes your this is your flagship, your Cedar Ridge Iowa Straight Bourbon, forty three percent. I can understand uh, how you're how you're easily outselling the the Jack uh, Daniels crowd. Uh, yeah, or, or yeah. You so. Making notes for yourself with those guys because this drink's nice and easy. It's not too big or robust. Um, and, 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 and you're, you're taking the words right out of my mouth. So um, let's talk about it a little bit. That's exactly what we're going for. Um. So I've got our. Uh, the lighting's pretty rough in here. I got our flagship Iowa bourbon whiskey, which is like like we just said, the number one seller in the state of Iowa when it comes to bourbon. Um, and yeah, what we're going for is something uh, something nice and approachable, easy sipping, an inviting glass of whiskey um, that a an everyday connoisseur of whiskey can appreciate, but also someone who's new to whiskey isn't going to get scared away from. So just yeah, to, uh, you know, the the way that I like to phrase it is that. Um, we like to build this whiskey like the people from Iowa. They're they're inviting. They're not going to offend anyone. Um, they're you know they're they're here to welcome you, and that's what this one's yeah. supposed to be. So, um, mash bill on it is seventy four percent corn, fourteen rye, twelve percent malted barley. So a good amount of malted barley in there. And I think yeah, that really nice. to uh, to kind of soften it up a little bit. What kind of corn or varietal are you guys using? Uh, so we use yellow corn number two, and um, number two. Okay. We, we are we are obviously dedicated to using all Iowa corn in this product. If we okay. weren't going to do that, I um, you know the model wouldn't really make sense. Uh, you know, sure, like, like we're we're doing this because we're in Iowa, so we got to use that Iowa corn. And um, for a long time, we were actually using exclusively family family farm from our farm in Winthrop, Iowa, um, okay. and that was yellow corn number two, uh, which is the most common variety grown in the state of Iowa. Um, we eventually got to the point where we couldn't only use our own family farm corn. So now we're sure. dedicated to all Iowa, but it is that yellow corn number two. Number two. Okay. Now what about your rye and your uh, barley? Where are those coming from and what, what bridal are you using of those? Um, yeah, good question. So our rye and our, our rye and barley, we get from out of the state, um, the barley okay. specifically from, from out of the country. Um, so hmm. we, in Iowa, we mainly grow corn and soybeans. I think Travis said something about that a second ago. <laughs> we don't grow much else. There are some cover crops and things like that, but almost every field is corn and soybeans. Um, okay. So there's not much locally that we can source there. And even if we could, we'd run into a malting issue. Um, we don't have a malting floor at okay. Tenerife. So um, like, for instance, the barley that we bring in, that's got to come in malted. And so what we've done is we've teamed up with the Prairie Malt Facility up in Saskatchewan, uh, bigger Saskatchewan. Um, an awesome place run by some really great people that we've become friends with over the years. And uh, they do all of our malted grains for us. And I, I can't speak highly enough of them. So, oh, so you malt your rise up there too? Uh, we, we do source rise from them as well. Yep. We, cool. we use both malted rye and cereal rye. Um, and we've landed on cereal, cereal rye moving forward. But uh, for a long time, they malted our rye as well up there. Yep. 
I love your malted rye. It's is a fun product. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's just a little bit different, but uh, it's a nice change of pace. It stays true to what rye is supposed to be, but it's got some some uh, twists and turns that you wouldn't expect, and it's, it's enjoyable. Yeah, it's like cause at the time I know when we tried your malted rye, I think there's only like seven or so in the world that weren't very many, and I was like, this stuff is awesome. Yeah, so back. I mean, it was when we first started doing it, it was really uncommon. I mean, I think it was. Uh, um, what St. George was doing one that was really good. Uh, Old Petrero, I think. Yep, those yeah. two. Uh, and then Tawa Carroll here in uh, Texas does uh, one. Yeah, and there's like I think three others. I can't think of off the top of my head, but I know there's, there's like seven. There's some good ones out there. Um, and it, it's always fun to explore that. I mean, if someone's messing around with malted rye, uh, you know that they like to have some fun with whiskey, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Like a challenge. I mean, yeah, yeah. Brian in general. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. It's very well rounded. Really but I like that cinnamon punch that I get about mid to end palate on it. I was going to say the <clears> rice <throat> is actually growing nicely as it, it sits does. in the glass. Well, and it has a, a long finish for me. And what was the proof on 43 this? Again? 43 percent. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. It drinks um, for me. Yep. Do you we guys do. chill filter or no chill, non chill filtering on this? Um, we do not chill filter this. Nope. Sweet. Yeah. Make sure you have a chill that. filter system at your at your at your facility. Um, we we do in a way. Um, so I'm um, being a winery and distillery. A lot of our tanks um, are hooked up to uh, a, a cooling system, essentially. So uh, it's typically utilized for our wines. But uh, what we can do if we need to chill filter something, which uh, from time to time we have to, uh, we can actually just use one of those tanks and and chill it way down low for a few days. Okay, nice. Um, nice. They want to know what the char level on the Malta Rye was. Any idea of hand what that was? Um, well, the, um, the char level, the barrel char would be char number three. So, um, okay. uh, almost exclusively char number three at Cedar Ridge. Oh, um, that with that easy. being said, I I have experimented recently with a couple barrels of uh, of uh, four, which is alligator, I believe, and nice. um, and uh, really really enjoyed it. I wouldn't mind doing um, like a, a ten or a twenty barrel batch of that as a special, cool. release, um, just a special char, but. So I, I am kind of I'm getting intrigued by the different jars right now, but our yeah. our typical product is jar number three uh, across the board. <laughs> oh, gosh, sorry, we're just reading the chat. Thanks, Troy. Responding to you, Murphy. Um, I'm gonna just leave it in the chat. I'm not gonna go ahead and put it up on their screen this time. But you know, <laughs> he's already gone. He's not even in any camp. Not even. Yeah, we've been Troy for several years. And yeah, he's one of the other Iowans. So that's here, Troy. Here, Troy. Sure, Troy. If you're watching the replay, buddy, you made us all laugh. Enjoy bed. And Thank there's you. our buddy time for a drive. How's it going? Good to see you. <clears throat> this is this is nice, and this is a fun. For yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, Gregor I wants to know if you have any bacon there tonight, Will. Uh, you of must course, have bacon yes. over there. Of course, of course I have bacon. Always. <laughs> Just hasn't been attacked yet. The cat is actually sitting right here staring at, you know, where the Clean, bacon is. Like, Just please waiting. Please open me. <laughs> the other one's sleeping, and she'll come running once we pop it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bacon mooches. Seriously. Oh, uh, Cohen wants to know, are you from the Cedar Rapids area in general? Um, yeah, I am. I, I was technically born in Minneapolis, but I, I moved to Cedar Rapids when I was like two years old or something. And oh. I, I've been okay. here, uh, pretty much my whole life. I had four years where I, I took a little break and moved out to Denver, Colorado, where okay. I, I um, was fortunate enough to work at another amazing distillery called Stranahan's. So oh, okay. I, Very cool. I was there for a few years and then eventually moved back. So yeah, I mean, Cedar Rapids, essentially my entire life, technically Fairfax, which is, um, I don't know if we have suburbs here, but it would be like a suburb. That's okay. Yeah. Because how big is Cedar Rapids, just like population in general wise? Uh, someone will correct me. I'm going to say 240, 240,000. Oh, it's, okay. It's bigger than I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty good sized population. Yeah, I figured it was like maybe a hundred or something. But okay, okay, so it's much bigger than I thought it was. Um, no, it, it's a it's a big place, um, and it's very widespread. Um, you know, everyone everyone has yards in Cedar Rapids, so it goes on forever. But uh, <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's about two hundred forty thousand. And like I said, okay. I'm sure someone can fact check. No that works. Uh, Eric, whenever my uh, when I'm less fat, that that's when I'll be on <laughs> bacon again. That's that's the goal: less fat. On a bacon uh, how's that working for you, Matt? With all that whiskey. That's working fine. Whiskey's good for you. <laughs> bacon, not so much. Whiskey, bacon, whiskey, bacon. Uh, Stacy wants to know, did you work with Patrick Miller at all? 
I'm Patrick Miller. That sounds uh, that sounds very familiar. Uh, is that at at, at Stranahan's? I would uh, guess. I would assume. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, man, the the chat so familiar, if I had to guess, I'd say that um, we probably overlapped but didn't work together um, long term. There, there oh. were some people that took off right when I got there, and some people that came in right when I left. So I imagine we probably crossed paths, but he wasn't in my uh, my everyday crew. Okay. Yeah, I hope not. I, I like to think that I remember when I worked with, but um, yeah, it's all good. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I guess Travis said apparently it's just a giant city, the greater Cedar Rapids, Iowa City area. It's two towns, but connected in many ways. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's that. That's exactly true. I mean, Cedar Ridge is actually um kind of right in the middle of the head. It, it's been funny. So Cedar Rapids and Iowa City are essentially. Uh, connecting. Um, they're they're about right. twenty minutes twenty minute drives away from each other, but uh, <laughs> they're, they're both expanding towards one another, and we are mm -hmm. equal distance from both. Um, so there's been a really big boom uh, heading, you know, in, in, in the direction that we're in, which has actually been really nice. So we've we've had timing on our side there. Perfect. Boring number two. Stacy um, said that Patrick Miller worked at Straining Hands yeah. before he started the. Um, yeah. the no, I didn't work with him there. I, I do know him though. I I, I talked with him. I I thought that's who you were, you were mentioning. I talked with him on Instagram from time to time. Really good guy. I did not work uh, with him though. Well, until Nua is fairly fairly new, right? Yeah. 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 They were at the ball last year. Right. Yeah, that's the one that was at the ball. Um, that, that's what's so cool about this industry, though. Um, I I really love it. Um, is that people there's like these distillery hubs essentially where. Um, you know, say there's like five or six different distilleries that people go and they just get started there and then they, they either start their own or they fan out somewhere else across the country. So um, Strain Hands is one that I would consider to be like a hub. They uh, they fostered a lot of these young distillers that have, have gone out. And, um, you know, obviously I'm at Cedar Ridge. I mean, uh, my, my mentor, Rob Dietrich, he's working with Black and um, I obviously mentioned Patrick Miller. Uh, there's there's people at Virginia Distillery Company. I mean, they're they've just like spread out all throughout the country, and there's a few hubs like that that have really helped uh, this this industry boom. Mm. Okay. So, this is a question yeah. from Troy. You have any concerns about calling your single malt the qu quintessential? You know, I don't know your last name. I mean, was that um, deliberate? It, it's I don't funny know. you bring that up. Uh, so um, so uh, I I kind of skipped over this. I'm in my very brief intro of Cedar Ridge, but. Um, it, it is a family business. It's um, my parents started back in 2005, and obviously their last name is Quint. And um, when when we were kind of workshopping names for our new American single malt whiskey, obviously we knew we wanted to to really uh, come out with a strong brand within that category because we're big believers in it. Um, we wanted a good name, and uh, our team of directors they presented the name the Quint Essential. And at first, both my dad and I just freaking hated it. I mean, it, like. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no chance that we're gonna call this the quintessential. That's that's like out of the question. Um, and then one thing led to another, and people kind of kept chipping away at us, and um, uh, eventually we settled on it and ran with it. And and now I I am really glad that we did do that because it does work really well. It, it adds to the story and all that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is always a little bit weird though. Um, uh, us Iowans are are, are are modest, humble people, and it is kind of weird putting your own name on a bottle like that. So hey, you make a great product, you must have put your name on it. Yeah. yeah. And and that's you know, that's true. I suppose if it was if it was garbage in a bottle, that'd be a yeah, lot it's worse. different story. But considering that there there is no whiskey in my career that I've worked harder on than the quintessential, um, I, I suppose it's the right one to do that with. So that's perfect then. Yeah. All right. So, what can you tell us about the ball and bone, and how long have you guys been laying this down for? Is there any difference in mash bill, and what can you tell us about it? Um. Yeah. So, also seventy four percent corn, fourteen percent rye, twelve percent malted barley. Um. So, the bourbons that we'll try tonight, they all do have the same mash bill. Same mash bill. Okay. And treated differently. Um. Throughout. Now, this one in particular, this bottle and bond. Um. This one. It, uh. It's just an extended age release. Obviously, it's got to be a minimum of four years old. It's got to be 100 proof every time. But what, what makes this one so fun, at least for me, is that uh, my, my uh, buddy Jamie and I, uh, Jamie is our vice president and our uh, general manager of the company, uh, we pick all the barrels for this release. So um, oh, okay. we, we lay out a ton of barrels that would qualify. You know, they all have to be from the same season, the same year, same distiller, all that. So we lay out the girls that would qualify, and then the two of us taste through a bunch of them together, and make a bunch of notes, and decide 
uh, which ones we want to go in the final batch. Um, do you have batch three? We do a batch three. Um, uh, all right, and and um, I'm only I'm only gonna say this about one product tonight, and if I say about more, you can call me out on it. But uh, out of the bourbons that we release, I I personally feel that this is the best bourbon we've released. The uh, batch three bottle of bond. So I'm really hoping that you guys enjoy it because otherwise it's going to be egg on my face. But uh, <laughs> I, I love them. I I'm love really proud of and to be honest, um, when we when we did the blend and we were bottling it, I really liked it. Um, but I, I don't know if it's changed in the bottle a little bit, which will happen from time to time, or if my pals adjusted or what. But every time I go back to it now, I just I'm really impressed by it. So uh, I do love this bottle of the bond and I hope to find it. Here we go. Yeah, I think Travis, we have one. I think I have a sample of one, then I've got a bottle of two and three. Okay, this All is right. a fruit bomb. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It really is like yeah. so much for a bourbon. Hello. Berries. I'm usually cream. I'm usually finding apple or cherry, not yeah, an orchard. Holy, totally not that. In a bourbon, yeah. Even a little bit of mango in there. I get a little yeah. bit of like spearmint as well, mintiness to it. Mm -hmm. It's got a really nice warming sensation in the middle of your tongue too, which is a nice cinnamon black pepper right there. That's oh, really good. Yeah, I'm still on the nose. Seriously, I was like, I'm just drinking it. It's really good. That's what matters. <laughs> oh, so that's the funny thing is, you know, when we talk about bond, is 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 the warehouse actually government bonded? Nobody enforces that part anymore. That is a good question. So um, is that still something the government comes out and checks out at the distillery? Hmm. Um, so I mean, it, the warehouses do have to be technically federally bonded. With that being said, um, I, I've never seen in the distilleries I've worked at, I've never seen someone come out and be like, Hey, <laughs> that's I even make better. Sure that this is federally bonded. You know, I, I've never, okay. I'm, I've never seen that happen yet. Um, you know, so I'm sure I'll get a phone call tomorrow or something, but um, <laughs> yeah. They do have to be federally bonded, but I've, I've never seen anyone keep it attached. It just adds to the allure. Like we, like when we went to Psalm class the first time. We found out that we always thought, like, get yeah, to take it to like to a warehouse to go around. No, like, we well, just you know zone off this part of your warehouse and oh, it's yeah. the bonded area. It's like what I'm, the hell? That, that, taped off that, part of the floor I'm, that's bonded. I taped it off. It's more Let's of a designation. That line. Like, I'm, yeah, hey, see that yellow line, that like that paint on the floor? Yeah, that's, washing tape. That's yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, so worse, worse you know, than what, that. What I, the entire house, warehouse, I, I think like jail cell. You know that like yeah, we keep all these these bottles in our, our locking jail key. cell. And, and yeah. um, no, that, that's not it. It's literally just yeah. it's like a um kind of like you zone property. Um, you know you have to like zone a room, and, and this area is bonded. Um, okay. But uh, I've never I've never seen anyone come out and check out. Isn't isn't the entire warehouse technically a bonded warehouse, though? Uh, yes, I mean, so that, that's how ours are. Ours are all external facilities, but um, I know that a lot of okay. um, smaller distilleries they operate out of out of one room, and I mean, you know, I I, I would imagine that uh, they can they can kind of section off areas. Otherwise, I'm not sure how they would do it. But uh, yeah, um, ours are all all of our what we call barrel sheds or rick houses are external and they're entirely uh, for barrel storage. Because how many barrel sheds do you guys have in total? Um, well, so we we are putting up our our tenth storage building, but I think seven of them are dedicated for just barrel storage, um, and the first three are, are very small. Um, so okay. I mean, we, we've really evolved over the year and we years, and we piece things together. The the uh, format of sheds that we're moving forward with for barrel storage is. Uh, 2,000 to 2,200 barrels will go in each shed. So okay. um, like our, we're putting up three more three more barrel sheds yet. So that'll give us capacity for six to 7,000 more barrels on the property. Okay. So what's your total amount of barrels you have approximately aging at the moment? Uh, we're, we're between 4,500 and 5,000. I mean, I obviously, I don't have the number. Um, I mean, right. by, by the end of the year, I mean, we'll be well over 5,000. Nice. Right. Okay. How's it going? And Travis wants to know if the that the barrel shed that he worked on recently is that one bonded. Um, the barrel shed that you worked on recently, um, if that the the most recent one we have is indeed bonded. So yes, um, and okay. that would be uh, barrel shed nine. Um, every time it's the it's the furthest west building we have, Travis. Um, so if that's the one you worked on, that is indeed a bonded warehouse. Okay. He also is checking up on said shed and wants to know. 
how how's the new shed? In other words, was my was my uh, <laughs> was this work shoddy or <laughs> work, work work was pristine. The shed is fantastic. I'm very well done. <laughs> I think that's the loudest the cat has ever been on on a live stream. <laughs> he has been sitting here since the get go, waiting for bacon. Oh, it's so funny. There's our from Swami here. Hey, Swami. Got Two dollars Canadian, which equals sixty-seven cents USD. Thanks, Swami. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, Swami. <laughs> and what forty percent of that goes to YouTube? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so by the time we're done with this, to get like thirty cents. Cool. Thanks, nice, Swami. Then you got taxes. Oh yeah, we got that. Put your face out of my face. All right, we'll get a quarter. <laughs> Thank you, Troy. Oh, so I yeah, really enjoy the bonded. That's quite delicious. Oh, I'm, I'm Travis. I did not know um, that you put in the uh, the fire alarm system. Thanks for doing that, man. That's uh, <laughs> you better uh, test that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope it's working well. Um, I haven't lit any fires in there, so I haven't tested it out. You can go light, hold a lighter up to it or something. Yeah. Um, no, I'll, uh, I actually tell people very often um, the, I mean, you know, the the one thing that really keeps me up in the middle of the night, um, outside of like, I mean, you know, someone getting injured on on the clock or something like sure. that, is a uh, um, is a fire. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I, would I mean, you know, we're we're a fairly big distillery at this point, but um, we're not big enough that we could burn a fifth of our inventory or anything like that. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, a fire fire definitely always has to be worried. And so, Travis, I appreciate uh, your efforts to prevent that from happening. Did you put, do you guys have a massive fire suppression system in all your buildings? Um, it, it depends which, which one. So the older ones, we don't. I mean, we have some fire suppression, but nothing massive. Um, and, and the new ones, like the one that Travis just worked on, um, we have a whole bunch of stuff that, okay. uh, that will prevent it. Um, we've got a uh, little, you know, collection and redemption area. With, you know, it, it's it's not even outside the building. There's like uh, certain grading so that if uh, flammable liquids spill out, it's all contained and it doesn't go into like a ditch or a waterway. So, um, yeah, a lot of effort goes into that stuff. A lot of planning goes into it. A lot of planning. Okay, correct. Well, I guess to answer your question, Dan, that's the kind of fire suppression he has. Uh, so you guys have a bottle and bond rye as well. Ooh, we need to try that. I mean, yeah, we do have a bottle and bond rye. I mean, we need to we need to get you guys a sample of it. Oh, yeah, I love it. Right. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, that was the that was kind of a one time thing that we did this year. Um, we thought okay. it would be fun. Um, our our bottle and bond bourbon has been kind of a, a hot commodity for us for a few years now. I mean, we thought it'd be fun to. Uh, also do a, a bottle of bond rye and uh, i was i was genuinely surprised by the response um you know being in iowa we're mainly maybe mainly bourbon focused and i'm trying to ram this thing ball down everyone's throats and uh <laughs> and, you know, people, i wasn't sure that anyone would hop on board the rye train and people really did so it's, it's a lot of people a lot yeah. of people like yeah. rye i'm not always one of them but i still want to try it yeah, yeah and, i'm a big fan of rye so i, I like to try it because i like so i like your malted rye and i like your other rye now you got a ball and bonner. I gotta try that. It sounds good. I'm, I'm sure we can make that happen. I'm sure we can make that happen. <laughs> Travis is owning that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Travis, I still owe you one, man, for all the all the hookups you've been doing. Them, you'll have to get a hold of me, shoot me an Instagram message or something, and uh, I'll take care of you, man. Uh, he has definitely been spreading the Iowa love. That's for yes, sure. Indeed. Very much appreciated. Yeah. What are we moving on to? All, All right, right, so we want to do what the double barrel next. You said, yes. I think I think it's time for the double barrel. All right. Um, and this oh, one is it. fun. Here's this little sample. <laughs> so, like, you make you your mat. Yeah. Oh. yeah, he's got the pretty bottle. There you go. He's got the pretty. Bottle. The pretty one we want to see. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Um. Yeah. So that this is our double barrel and um, the same mash bill. Like I said, all the bourbons that we try tonight are going to be the same mash bill. Um, we're big into cask finishes at Cedar Ridge. We are exploring a couple different mash bills for the future, but um, what we've typically done is done the same mash bill every time and just seeing how we can uh, finish it differently in, in certain casks, stuff like that. So um, on this one, the double barrel, obviously, what we have done is we've used new American oak treatments two different times. So um, we, we put it in its initial uh, American oak fresh char, uh, char number three, for a little over three years. I think it was like three years, two months. And okay. then we transferred it to a second treatment in New American Oak for an additional year, almost exactly a year for that second treatment. So okay. um, it 
it has been uh, aged a little over four years, but two American oak barrels. And um, that, it, I guess it's been a few weeks since I've tried it, but last time I had it, I mean, that was very noticeable. And what I, what I was so excited about um, on this one and even a little bit nervous about was how our whiskey was going to hold up with those two oak treatments. As we've kind of talked about tonight, um, we, we have a very approachable, uh, uh, inviting, maybe even, maybe even delicate bourbon. And I was nervous if we treated it twice on, on fresh oak, that, that might completely overpower it and make it off balance. But, uh, I, I feel like that's not the case here. And no, I know it smells like super honey vanilla. vanilla. Oh yeah. Yeah. It definitely hey, doubled down on, on vanilla. Uh, like you said, honey, vanilla. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff really nice. that uh, Mirage needs to carry. There's our buddy, Eric over at mm -hmm. Mirage, Agronaut there. Uh, I, I do agree, Jason. Travis probably has moved a measurable quantity of cedar ridge. It's probably a true statement. But Swami yeah, wants to know, do you have any peanut butter whiskeys at, at all? So, or bacon flavor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. I like that yeah. extra bit of oakiness with the vanilla. Yeah, the barrel the tannin. Yeah. The barrel tannin shows up more on the palate than I was expecting on the nose. It smells a lot sweeter than it ends up being. I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, I agree with I, that. I like that. I think that's a I like that thing. smokiness. That's nice. it, it, yeah, I like that smokiness too. That char is bringing it, that little smokiness to it. But the tannins that? aren't that, you know, mouth drying, suck all the moisture out tannins. It's not over tannin. Mm, yeah. I like it. Uh, yeah, I'm in, it's been a fun one. I mean, it, it actually, so this bottle has become... Uh, one that, that's kind of hunted in Iowa. I mean, next year we're going to take it into the surrounding states, so it'll be available throughout the Midwest. Um, but I, I did not know that there was going to be such demand for it, and I, I didn't. Normally, if we do something that, that I really love, I'll buy like a case of it, so I have it kind of forever. And um, I did not do that on this one, and it got away from me. So now, now I have to hunt my own product, which is a real bummer. That's so. really good. I really yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> Oh, oh my! That was apparently me. my children. Wasn't my house. Out. That was my yeah. children. Now, is this something that you're going to be able to continue to do, even with the oak shortage going forward? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that as well. Um, man, the oak shortage. Where, where it even? Um, yeah. after my stream last night. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as a matter of fact, we were so we were going to transfer it um this week. Uh. We were going to transfer some double barrel stuff uh, this week, and uh, we delayed it a couple weeks so we get another truckload of barrels um, just to just to make sure that, uh, you know, that the timing is going to work out and that we're going to be able to get the supply that we need. I'm not too nervous about that for this particular product. I just – we have to put away X barrels per month in order to, to, you know, meet our business plan demands. And if we're transferring into second oak treatments, we're kind of wasting barrels uh, when we need to be filling more. So it's kind of a tough time to uh, – to do that. But anyway, um, I, I know we'll be able to get it done this year. Um, I'm hoping next year as well. The oak shortage, um, from what, from what I understand, I mean, there's two different elements. I mean, there's, there's the supply chain issues, but I've also been told this one's a lot more, uh, labor demand. Um, it, it's, you know, labor shortage issues. Uh, making barrels is extremely hard work. I don't know anyone who works harder than people who make barrels. So no, so your problem is actually it's Coopers. You don't have enough Coopers. I mean, that's that's the thing is, I mean, those guys, work, those those men and women work insanely hard, and I think there's a shortage of people signing up to do it right now. I'm okay. looking that they're having trouble fulfilling demand. So I don't know that um that or at least what what I have heard from my sources is that this is not due to like you know we're, we're out of wood or we're out of we're out of steel yeah. this is more hey we're having trouble producing the amount of barrels that you need us to produce right now okay um, i don't know that that's the truth but that is what i've been told from from the sources that i've worked with yeah. makes sense yeah so colin wants to know if there's gonna be an ashton kutcher edition at all because he's a local guy <laughs> um it's funny. so ashton kutcher is um i think he is like the um, the the, the What's the word? Like the the gem, the diamond in the rough. Like every, everyone in Iowa is trying to work with Ash and Kutcher on something. I mean, sure. Whether it's a brewery or a distillery, um, I, I have uh, absolutely reached out to him. Um, I didn't hear back. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if it ever happens. I'm sure one day uh, one day he'll do something cool with uh, a brewery or distillery or winery in Iowa uh, because he's, he's such an incredibly loyal Iowan who does a lot of good stuff for our state. Um, but I also think that he, um, you know, Kind of wants to keep things level and not show favoritism. I think he kind of sure. supports it all. So 
I, I don't know if we'll we'll see that from us or anyone else. Um, but I can tell you that uh, there's no shortage of people trying to work with them here in Iowa. That's true. <laughs> so my brother, he wants to know is how old are the trees to make the oak barrels? You guys are using any idea? Um, I believe they have to be over seventy. It's either seventy or seventy-five years old wow. um, before yeah. they before they get cut down. Um, and then it's there nice. is the drying process, and I think they have to dry out for for like two to three years, depending right. which type you're using. Um, so th there is. Uh, one heck of a, a lead time there, obviously, um, and, and that is one concern that I have had. I've been, I've been assured that this is not an issue, but um, in, in my head, it kind of makes sense, and that's that. Uh, I mean, seventy-five years ago, there's no chance that we saw this boom coming. I mean, sure, uh, you know, uh, freaking twenty years ago when we opened up, um, we yeah. were we were like one of the first twenty distilleries to open up outside the state of Kentucky. Um, now there's uh, there's well over three thousand, and so. Um, you know, I, I doubt 75 years ago we really saw that coming. With that being said, I'm sure that uh, that cooperages and stuff have been able to secure more uh, timber and stuff like that that they can work with. So, yeah, uh, the, those trees, they have to be super old, and it's quite the process, uh, a lot of lead time in order to get them from point A to point B. Yes, and you have to let them dry naturally. Don't use that kiln. Yeah, you can yet. definitely tell yeah. these are the good barrels. This is not the – that's the worst thing you get from craft. Just drying. don't use the right barrels. It's so sad. <laughs> well, barrels are such such an incredibly important part of the process. Um, I mean, the, the distillate goes in them clear, and when it comes out, it's done. I mean, that should tell yeah. you that you do not mess around with cutting corners on your barrels. Uh, barrels are one of the most important parts, if not the most important part of the process. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Switch my over to being a rep. So Jim Rainbow. It's a good choice. I like this plan. I'll, I'll take that one all day. Yeah. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Good to see you there. There you go. It, it, he's right. World War II oak. And that, that's accurate. That's exactly about how old the trees have to be. Oh, wow. World War II in order I've to never, use them today. Um, you know, that's funny. I, I've never thought about that. Um, what, one of my favorite things to do when I open a barrel of whiskey mm -hmm. is to, um, as I'm trying to, uh, you know, say to uh, a five-year-old barrel or something like that, I like to think um, of all the things that, while, I, while I'm nosing it and drinking it, all the things that I've done over the last five years while this whiskey has sat in the barrel. But I've yeah. never, um, you know, and, and that, that's like a really romantic, fun part of my job, but mm -hmm. I've never taken it so far to think like, man, uh, you know, 79 years ago, this barrel was a, a seed, you know, like it, I've, yeah. I've never True. taken it that far. So now you're going to think that every single time you, I know. <laughs> yeah. Hey Bill, how's it going? Good to see you. Hey Bill. Cheer. Cheers. Mm. All right. Yeah, yeah, this this is quite good. Just, mm, this yeah. reminds me almost of the the char level, like a striker and the smoke and the striker, a lot. This is really good. I can get behind that. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Like I said, we, I, I was really really pleased with it when it came out, and I I was nervous going into it just because, um, the you know the first bourbon we had, the Iowa bourbon tonight, it's just it's 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 very approachable and inviting, and I was nervous that it might over oak. And it didn't seem to do that. Mm -hmm. it, it it's quite good. good. If hey, Marty, good to see you. I haven't checked out Whiskey Nose. Check out his show. We checked his out. Hey, Marty. Yeah, yeah, oh, I like that yeah. one a lot. We're gonna have to really try like that one, Dad. Travis, we, we, need, uh, we need all that. That's freaking amazing. Out of the first three so far, any favorites from you guys? I really like that. I mean, I like yeah. the fruit bomb with this one, but this this double is freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm I really like that. I like that. Bomb that was the bottled and bond in that one. And the, yeah, the bottled and bond in that one. I'm leaning more towards the double because I like that smokiness. Yeah, did me you? too. It's just a little bit more full, if you will. I mean, there's just a lot. Yeah, more I like the, the oiliness and thickness of it too. It's just got a really nice cohesive mm -hmm. oily bond to it. All right. Plus, you know, I guess it's what 101 proof, so slightly higher than the last one. Yeah, 105, 105 proof. Sorry, it's a little bit higher. And then I guess now we're going to do the port cask finished bourbon at 94 proof. Um, oh yeah, and this so one. Tell us a little bit about this. Um, so this one is a ton of fun. As as I've kind of mentioned a couple times, um, extremely passionate about about cask uh, transfers and using using fun finishing casks to finish out both bourbon and single malt. The reason that I'm so jazzed about that is because we're that winery distillery combination. And um, as the head distiller and director of operations, I, I oversee um, all, all of our production, stuff, um, whether it's the, the winery distillery. Um, and I have a lot of very talented people doing that work. Um, and, and this brings everyone together. You know, um, for instance, our winemaker uh, is a guy named Kent Falker, who's incredibly talented. 
And, you know, if he empties a cask, uh, the distilling team can fill it up later that day with, with bourbon in this case, or even single malt, which we'll try later. So um, I really do like that it's all encompassing of our production process and our production team. And so that, that's what makes it special to me. But so this is, um, this is three-year-old bourbon, the mash bill, once again, 74% corn, 14 rye, 12% malted barley. It, it spent the first three years in its new American oak char number three. And then for a little over a year, this one was like a year and four months. It sat in, uh, in fresh emptied port. So, how old, how long was your port in the barrel for prior to this? Um, oh man, a, a long time. I mean, probably north of five years. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. So this has been there we have a while. Quite the, we have quite the inventory of ports, but, um, yes, yeah, so, no this one's fun. Um, this is, um, this new label is actually a rebranded, um, first time release. It looks like this now. Um, okay. Yeah. Some people, obviously Travis and any of the Iowans in this group, um, they know some of our, let's see if I've got anything behind me. I mean, some of our old labels, uh, were, were very different than this. Ooh. And what we wanted wow, to do was cool. while we put the, the new clothes on the new label, we wanted to make sure that this was more of a port bomb. Our port cast bourbon in the past has been bourbon with just a hint of, hint of wine, hint of port. This is a port bomb. To say the least. So, we were having a discussion last night with Marsha Licorice from Iron Root, and we were discussing barrel finishes and them getting barrels from France and using them. Now, you get these barrels from as opposed to them getting barrels that are for and by the time they get them they're you know fairly dried out and they have to re moisten them for lack of a better word um rehydrate rehydrate <laughs> moist is such a bad word but since you have them and they're so close to home how how um wet are they or are they dried out or do you still even have a little bit in there and yep um no that, that's actually a really great question and a differentiator i mean i i will probably talk about that a little bit more when we get on the quintessential but um, that is it is a huge, huge advantage to being a winery distillery combination. Whether it's a, a cask that, that just held wine or some of our rum and brandy, we make those things too. Um, if we empty it, literally later that day, we can fill it back up. When I mean, they're, they're I mean, nice. as you said, moist. <laughs> it is, it, it is yeah. uh, very so wet inside that barrel still. And you're going to, going to have some more flavor to access uh, when you do that transfer. Now, I'm not talking like there's still gallons of liquid in the barrel. But, but it is still perfectly fresh and not dried out. Um, so it, it is an advantage. With that being said, I, I, I do need to be transparent and say we do also buy um, used casks from, from around uh, the globe. I mean, for instance, our sherry butts that we use in our quintessential, we get those from Spain. So, I mean, we can't do it with everything. But, for instance, port cask bourbon, uh, red wine finished single malt, stuff like that, we can, we can use our own casks. And it does make a, a big difference. Um, sure. so really, really creates a flavor bomb when we do that so what kind of port is this that was in here prior um these these are ruby ruby these are ruby okay yep yeah a little bit of that tone even shows through that is deaf that is glass that is definitely the most port, port bourbon i've ever had same, <laughs> same. It, like I said, that's, that's what we're going for it, we wanted to invert what we had done for the last several years i mean that's bourbon with just a hint of port notes on the finish we wanted this one to be um, we wanted it to taste like this looks like to me, this, this, like it this really volume, does. It looks like it, it's going to be heavy yeah. port and that's what it is. So I, I agree. If we yeah. thought that the first, if the second one was really fruity, yeah. we were very much mistaken. Um, <laughs> the fruit notes, the berry notes in this one are, are absolutely just screaming towards the, the surface. It's, I like it a lot. It reminds me yeah. of like a great jelly finish too. Like, like when you're making a peanut butter jelly sandwich, it's like I'm making my kids yeah. sandwich. It's totally a great jelly finish. Like you lick the spoon after you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You get a little bit of the nice metallic yeah. the spoon that's in there. That's all I can taste now, which is I, I love. I'm a big. It's, I love PB and J's, so that's great. Yeah, this is a peanut butter <laughs> and jelly ball, like totally. You even get the you do get the peanut butter in there too. So yeah, that's wow. that's really good. You're not joking. This is this is a this is a PB and J in a glass. I like it. Mm. Very cool. Can't believe we never put that together. <laughs> when I would come part of Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> that's tasty. Yeah, American port. <laughs> That's hysterically funny. <laughs> yeah, I um, mean, you know, we, we've done a few things recently. Um, we kind of have a what we call like an inspired by series going, um, mainly out of our winery, uh, but I, I suppose our distillery too. But um, we've obviously had an American port uh, for a number of years now. But 
Uh, this year, our, our winemaker, Kent, uh, just came out with a Madeira-inspired wine. Um, where we're at, we have to call it a dessert wine, but uh, it is very much inspired by a Madeira. So it's nice. a Fusilera system. Uh, it takes a long time to produce it. But boy, uh, boy, did he hit the, the nail right on the head with this Madeira-inspired wine. Uh, uh, dessert awesome. wine that we have, so I recommend yeah. that as well. We're lucky in Texas Thanks. we get to call it Madeira because we have an agreement with them. <laughs> how long is it going to be until you finish something in uh, Madeira wine? Um, that, that's uh, you know, I I don't want to be rude to Kent and be like, hey man, you know, when are you gonna empty all the <laughs> so I can finally use them? Uh, but I, I I think about the same thing all the time. I am so excited <laughs> uh, um, to use some of our like our own cast for it. We do have um, some Madeira casks that we've we've sourced and put our own single malt in, but it would be a ton of fun to take the ones that Kent is using right now and put either a bourbon um, or a single malt in to finish out. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. I've had a couple Madeira finishes and the ones that I've had. You love those. Yeah. They're yeah. so very good. So hot commodity. And that's, looking forward to that. that's a, another thing right now um, in this industry is, you know, uh, sherry finished whiskey, port finished whiskey, Madeira finished whiskey. I'm all, all lightning hot right now. Everyone wants yeah. those. But and in yeah. order for those to be sustainable, I mean, in order for us to keep producing those cool whiskeys in those cool casks, we also have to drink the stuff that started out in those casks. Right. Not a pro, love Port Madeira, so we try to do what we can for it. I mean, that's it. We need people doing that because if, if people stop drinking port, there's no more port casks. Hey, if you want to do a show and we come back and talk about your Madeira type thing in a port, we do a whole show on just the, your winery if you want. I'd be all for trying that too. Um, I, I honestly, um, if, if you want to, I'll get Kent and, and uh, we can tag team it. We'll yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to try your guys' wine there. anyway, so I think that'd be a fun show. Yeah, um, I got a that, bottle. Sitting I'll in my... drink the whiskey because I can't drink the wine, but I'll drink the whiskey. She'll drink the stuff finished in it. We'll drink the wine. I'll drink. I can drink the stuff finished in it, go. but red, red wine gives me headache. Yeah, not work for you. I can't. It's not so, worth it. Uh, regardless, so we we have to work that out because um, it's man, uh, it, it'd be a ton of fun, and and Kent's so incredibly knowledgeable. Yeah, that would be awesome because we don't. There's not many people that have distillers and wineries in the same place, so that'll be right. fantastic. Usually it's breweries and distilleries, so this will be a really fun uh, crossover for sure. So we see Eric Quartz, he's got a, his friend got a YouTube channel from Southwest Wisconsin called Drinks with Ron. So I guess check out Drinks with Ron. We'll have some, some Wisconsin stories later this year, such as Hatch will be on. I see this bourbon baller. Check his out. How you going? God, that's so good. I like that. That's so right, good. Scott. He's gonna tell us a good time. I mean, we've always wanted to have a winery on, so this is the perfect way to do it. Is someone's got a winery in the story, so we will make that happen. That sounds awesome. I'm very yeah, excited. Yeah, Travis. He that. still has it. He still yeah, has right, it. In it's back there in our wine cellar closet. Yeah, the, the closet we talked about. Hey, Andy, how's closet. it going? Good to see you. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a good question. So Andy's got a really good question for you. So why do wineries such as Starlight, Cedar Ridge, Burning Chair seem to be a better success at whiskey than beer brewers? Um, you know, that, I mean, I, you know, with, with, without saying whether, whether or not I think that's true or false. I mean, if I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hypothesize on that, um, in which I, I, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you saying in the first place. Um, I, I would say... Um, you know, brewers, brewers by nature are going to be um, very, very caught up in the mash, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's what they do. Right. I, mean, I mean, they brew, and uh, everything that they do um, is from mashing, or, well, really from the grain to the mash to the fermentation, and then traditionally brewers are going to be done from there, right? That, that's kind of the end mm -hmm. of the process a lot of times. Um, for, for us, it's just getting started there. I mean, uh, and then you get into a whole world of, of – uh, different casks that you can utilize. I mean, I suppose that's both in wine and beer. Um, but I guess I, I would suppose that brewers would would be very focused on that that initial step as opposed to the whole thing, where right. like a winemaker might see it a little bit differently. But uh, I think, I mean, you know, um, I, I've been fortunate enough to be in this industry for like 15 years now, and I mean, I've met I've met some people that are really surprise you. I mean, I've I've met. Uh, brewers from the smallest brewery who know way more than I do. I mean, I've met winemakers who are insanely talented. Um, there are so many people with so much knowledge in this game. It, it, it's really enjoyable. So I think, you know, you can, you can see talent from both wineries and breweries and I'm excited for more of them to get stills and uh, see what they're. Yeah, I, like, I know one of the good the brewers we've had on is um, 
real spirits down in, in mm-hmm. Blanco. We tried a bunch of their beers and their and their uh, whiskeys, and that was a really fun night. Having the beer, and then going, well, here's the beer, and here's the whiskey that beer makes. That was fun to do. So yeah, that, very that entertaining. Is definitely good, fun. Good beer, good whiskey. So <laughs> there's there's some good hop beer or hop whiskeys coming out as well. I've had a couple that I I don't mind. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had, was it, um, Amador makes that hop one that's pretty good. Yep. I like that one. And there's another one with the Char Bay, something like that makes the super hoppy whiskey. Uh, yeah, Char, Char-, yeah. Char- Bay, yeah. um, they're awesome. So we, we used to have the same distributor out in California for a while. Mm. And um, that was my intro to them. They're they're really good at what they do, Char Bay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I've heard. They were really good. Very nice. Spencer wants to know when we're going to get on to the Quintessential. Well, like, get damn single malt. Come on, get to he it. He needs to go to bed soon, and he wants to drink that with us. So. <laughs> okay. I'm with you guys. I'm with you guys. Let's let's taste some quintessential then. All right, sounds like a plan. All right, so we're gonna switch gears here. We're gonna go from there. We go. That's the quintessential. Um, so we're switching from our flight of bourbons that we've been on, and finishing with an American single malt whiskey. And um, for those of you who don't know this about me, I'm a huge advocate and believer in the category of American single malt whiskey. And I, I think it is. I think it is the next big thing in this uh, in this game. Mm-hmm. And I hope uh, I hope to convert every single person I talk to along the way. So you don't have to worry about us. We're already there. Yeah, Spencer couldn't wait here. He drank it. But yeah, if you guys haven't checked out when we had Murphy on for, uh, a couple weeks ago. For the entire big American single malts thing we did, that that that, that show's done really well. It's got almost nine hundred views. It's done really well. That was um, so fun too. And we just reviewed, yeah, just so far. It's only been a couple of weeks, and then we actually just reviewed the Quintessential a couple of weeks ago as well. So if you guys want to see full notes what we thought on it, it's excellent. But we'll let uh, Murphy talk a little bit more about it. Um, all right, I'm just gonna dive dive straight into the process. So that that's what makes this product um so cool, in my opinion. I, I think it is the coolest thing we do from a process standpoint at Cedar Ridge. And kind of like I was alluding to on the forecast bourbon, the reason why I think it's so neat is because it is entirely all encompassing of what we do in a very big way. So um, we put all of our single malt away in our, our once used bourbon barrels. So and we, you know, we bottle bourbon. Now we've got a bunch of empty bourbon barrels sitting around. So we put our single malt in there for about three years. Um, from there, that's where the fun starts. We bring those barrels in, um, we we empty them all into a tank, and then we transfer that whiskey into a series of unique finishing casks. And this is where it's advantage, um, advantageous to be a winery, uh, to be a rum distillery, a brandy distillery. We can use all those barrels as finishing casks for that single malt, in addition to also sourcing some uh, uh, like sherry casks, uh, port butts, or sherry butts, port casks. If we don't have mm-hmm. them on hand already, we can bring some in. So basically we have all these finishing casks. We'll lay that single malt down in them for about another two years. And then comes the final step and the most fun, and that's we lay all these unique finishing casts out across our distillery floor. So we've now got single malt and, and brandy casts, rum casts, sherry casts, you name it. And we taste through them all as a team, and we taste what is in our big uh, wooden Solera vat, and we determine which barrels should then be added to it. So, um, you know, to, to give you a quick cliff notes, a recap, everything starts out in bourbon casks, then it goes to unique finishing casks, then we strategically marry it into our Solera vat, bottle it halfway down, fill it back up, bottle it halfway down, fill it back up so it never goes empty. The whole, the whole concept is that this Solera vat is going to slowly um, uh, evolve over time. You know, we, every time we release one, it's a new batch, and we want batch seven and eight to be almost uh, very similar to one another, I guess. But by the time we go from batch seven to batch 50, it's probably going to be pretty different because it's evolving over time as we add new casks to it. So it's a ton of fun. Um, it, it brings the whole team together. It utilizes our winery. It utilizes our distillery. Um, and, you know, I think just the, the coolest part about it is that it it, it requires so much skill and, and sensory. Um, our whole team tastes through these, and we all use our palates to determine which ones go in the tank. I mean, it's just a ton of fun from a – uh, uh, a production standpoint. It's like the most elaborate ever ending infinity bottle. Yeah, that that's essentially it. Yeah, it's it's like if all the whiskey behind me, I strategically tasted them all and determined which one should go in my my infinity bottle, and then yep. I only emptied it halfway and filled it back up. That's yep. actually a, a pretty good analogy. I love it. Yep. Oh, that's good. And I love the nose on yeah, it. I love this. Uh, 
to a single mall. Oh, so Bill wants to know, can you get this in Oklahoma or is this not available in Oklahoma yet? In Oklahoma, so it is not distributed currently to Oklahoma. Okay. Um, with that being said, uh, we do we have a couple third-party uh, online retailers such as Speakeasy. I'm not sure if Speakeasy ships to Oklahoma. That stuff always changes. Um, so if you go to our website and you, you click buy now, it'll, it'll tell you pretty quickly whether or not we can get it to your state. But uh, the, in Oklahoma, the best route would be to go the online distribution method. Okay. This is just such a berry bomb. Just this is so no. damn good. Yeah. So the funny thing is, so we've been talking to you guys up. We've had several people buy bottles since you were on for the, the thing a couple weeks ago. And then people had opened them up tonight. They've been very static. And people have been drinking throughout the day. So we've gotten some nice notes in them throughout the day, which has been great. Um, well, hey, I'm really glad to hear that. And, um, you know, I appreciate the support. And, uh, um, yeah, help, help us get this name out there. That's for sure. I'm Absolutely. Excited. People should be drinking this. If you can't get it, you should find a way to get it. That's that's the best thing is you're, you're not going to be sad at all, to say the least. Yeah. This is really good American single mall. Hey, thank you. And um, like I said at the very beginning of this, um, I've, I've never I've never poured my heart and soul into a product more than I have on this one. Um, my, my guys will tell you at work, um, like I said, we, we all taste through these barrels and determine which one should go in the Solera. But at the end of the day, um, it, it, is, it is my call um, which ones for sure go in. And um, they'll tell you that, okay. you know, I'll be trying to dial in on finalizing another batch and I'll just be going insane. Like I, I can't get it where I want it. I can't get it where I want it. And I'll spend a couple of weeks on it and I'll finally, I'll finally get it there. Like right, right as the buzzer beater goes off and uh, it, it's so rewarding every time, but there will be a period about two weeks out from bottling where I'm, I'm just so going insane. Do that. Do you just like try to find another barrel that will just make it? You think that ads or what do you have to do to kind of get it to that point? I mean, that you'll yeah. that Good question. Um, you know, and that's at this point, having tasted through so many of these unique finishing casks, I've got a pretty good, a um, pretty good idea of what barrel is going to do what to the Solera tank. Um, okay. so yeah, I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll taste my batch and I'll be like, man, you know, it's, it's just, it's just missing a little bit of this, you know, maybe some fruit forward notes and, oh, you know, I bet a, uh, single malt finish in an apple brandy cask. I bet that's, what's going to kind of okay. bring it back to where I want it to be or, or the opposite end, you know, I mean, it's too fruit forward. I need to get a little bit of baking spice. I need to get a little bit of, um, you know, uh, of this or that, you know, maybe, maybe hit it with some sherry cask finish single malt. And so nice. basically you just keep kind of manipulating and pulling in different directions and eventually you can get that it to where sense. you want to be. But um, that, that's what makes it so fun. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like painting a picture only, only, you know, you're creating a whiskey and um, using, you know, using the skill set that you've developed throughout your career in order to do that. And I think that's uh, very beautiful. That's Absolutely. a really freaking cool process. Yeah, quite a, quite a skill. So Troy wants to know is that batch one was delicious. What's the dip, basically the drift between one through six at this point in time? Um, yeah, um, and it, it's uh, I'd say it's kind of um, like uh, fluctuated a little bit. I mean, batch one, um, I'd say um, batch eight, which is the most recent batch that that I've released. I don't know what you guys have there. Um, I, I'm working on this batch is nine. batch. So what are we on? Batch six. I've got Ooh, batch six. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of wavered over time. Batch one was pretty heavily sherry influenced. I, this comment went by pretty quickly, but I think Travis mentioned it. Um, my, my style is very much, um, peat and sherry. I love peated single malt. I love sherry, but for this particular product, I've tried to keep the peat as a background note. You know, it, it's, it's in so the music, funny. but it's not the headliner. It's, it's a, it's, it's a, a background musician here. Uh, and I like for sherry to be a little bit more prominent. Um, however, I mean, as time's gone along, I mean, batch five, I know I stepped up the piece uh, just because uh, my last name is Quint, the number five, Quint, uh, they, they kind of go <laughs> hand in hand. And so I said, hey, I, you know, Quint's my last name and uh, this is batch five and I'm going to, I'm going to kick up the beat on this one. So that's cool. You know, yeah. Every now and then I'll, I'll throw a little, a little serve ball in there like I did then. But for the most part, it's, it's going to be fairly consistent. There's like a range that I'm trying to operate in right now. Sure. Yeah. And, and I'm not a fan of peat products like Isla peat style products, but I, it comes across as smoky for me. I don't get any of the peat notes that I yeah, don't where like. Where did you say your peat comes from again? Is it Highland peat? What, where is... uh, um, yeah. So it's bear, Baird's heavy malt. Baird's heavy malt. Um, okay. 
which I believe I believe you are right on that. I need to. Yeah, it's Inverness or something like that. I think. Yeah. Let's see. So Donald wants to are you using any heirloom barley mm -hmm. varietals, Matt? After that one, uh, I have a question from Discord that I want to get to. Okay. Um, yeah, and and not at this point in time. Um, it's something that I'm interested in. Um, interested in checking out. I'm interested in learning more about um the the, the different grains that you can utilize. But right now, I'm so um focused and caught up in cast finishing and, and really so nice. you know the, the grains that you're utilizing is the very beginning of a whiskey production process. I'm very interested right now in um the the finishing elements where it's cast finishing or blending techniques. So that's kind of where my heart's at right now. But I do eventually intend to loop back and really start messing with some different grains. Nice. So uh earlier in the day Charles Ashworth uh was saying in our Discord that there needs to be a pick of quintessential with a Jaws themed sticker saying we're going to need a bigger bottle. <laughs> so my question to you is, is can we have a run mm -hmm. of the quintessential bottled in 1.75s with that? We're going to need a bigger bottle sticker on there. Um, absolutely. So I'm, let me think this through in my head. Um, one, we'd need, we need the bottles, um, which is a, a, a problem. Bottles are the hardest thing in the world to get yeah. right now. We can, we can talk about that in a second, but um, if we could do that. We'd need to, um, whatever state we're in, we have to register the different size. Uh, guys, mm. um, the amount of regulation in this industry is absolutely insane. Um, there's so many hoops you got to jump through. And I think, I mean, a lot of people just think that it's like, oh, oh no, you can just you can just switch your bottle size. You can just switch this and that. It's like, no, th those are technically different products. If I go from a 750 milliliter to a to a, a one liter bottle, um, that that's I have to get a whole different set of approval, new labels, and everything. Um, oh wow! But, but to answer your question, oh. uh, yes, we can do it. Um, you know, if, it, if it's as easy as yes or no, uh, absolutely we can. <laughs> and if that's something that enough people were interested in, I think the Jaws idea is pretty awesome, and I'd be open. To maybe it. maybe we'll just do it in Iowa release only. I don't have to worry about that way. You don't have to worry about you know. We just have private to take care of the distribution, man. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's still <laughs> true. Well, we need to travel to handle the rest. And that's right. Good. Yep. That's right. We, yep. we have distribution covered. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Travis yeah. Wallace. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's the quintessential. And uh, <laughs> um, like I said, we're, uh, we're, we're big believers in this category. We're working hard to position ourselves within it. Um, as, we, as we saw the last couple of weeks, um, the, there are a number of distilleries really, really going all in on it. I mean, we talked with Westland, we talked with uh, Balcones and Virginia Distillery Company. There's a number of other ones as well. But, um, um, you know, we were trying really hard to be in that top tier that people think of when they talk about American single malt whiskey. Absolutely. And we've been putting um, plenty of inventory away for what, you know, as this boom continues to go off uh, so that we can continue to feed the market. Yep. <laughs> It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I like Andy's comment. Yeah. There's lots of availables are coming soon that used to be for vodka. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I, I mean, that's, that, that actually might shake things up a little bit. Who knows? You know, people have been worried about the glass problem, too. So Problem solved. I don't think the people at Russian Standard are going to be bottling anytime soon. Uh, no. <laughs> that That's for sure. Um, they're, they're in some some trouble. But, yeah, you know, if it, if it eases the... Uh, the the bottle issue that that would be fantastic because man has that been a nightmare i mean our, our custom bottle for instance um i know the lighting's weird but um th this is our, our custom bottle you know it's a different shape it's got kind of the bulb here it's got a custom cedar ridge on bottom you can see uh, i mean we we had shipments of those bottles that got delayed like six to eight months so, I mean, you know we, we we had to put our beloved bottled and bond in a generic bottle which i mean that, that's, okay. just how, that's just how it's gone that's and it's it hasn't just been us i mean e even some of the biggest players in this industry have had to switch to stock generic bottles because they can't access their own um some people have the means to air freight bottles which um to air freight a container of bottles is 40 to 50 grand i mean so uh, um, it, it's yeah. really, really shaking things up right now yeah um, it's expensive and, and hopefully um hopefully that goes away soon although i think we've got a, a little bit of room to run yet so okay that's, yeah, yeah that's, you don't bring that over yeah. here scott you, just, you leave that over on whiskey crusaders or the whiskey tribe bullshit bulb deep shit <laughs> we don't play that game over here 
Besides, you, we use we Glen Karen, so you, it's you want to do that? Anyway. That's your prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep. Okay, I'll be right back. Apparently, my daughter's melatonin. trying to turn my lights off. I'll be back in Matt, a minute. Melatonin, <laughs> a lot of it. Thirty minutes, kids asleep. Do it. <laughs> so. Man, I, 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 I had a buzzer beater right before we came down here. I got my my three kids to sleep, and I was I was getting pretty nervous. I was like, guys, you, you got to close those eyes right now because I need to get down here in two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> Just barely made it. Yeah, ours doesn't go to sleep unless we give him a, some melatonin in the evening. If we don't, he's up until like midnight, oh, and it's ridiculous. And He's almost eight, so just take the pill and go to sleep, please. Yep, just go to bed. I just go to bed. Matt's kids never go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised this one's asking you asking to go to bed. She was asking to go to bed. That's what she's saying. That's a miracle, right? Is it violent? Oh, that's what I heard. Wow. So we've got some other things over here since yeah. I want to talk about the fact we haven't we haven't mentioned uh, at all a wheat whiskey or um, we kind of touched on a rye. <laughs> But I have a rye finished in apple brandy barrels here. I have a wheat wh whiskey here that uh, was sent to us by Travis. Are you still making those products, or is that are those on the back burner? Um. Oh, oh yeah. Um. We still make them. Um. Especially the rye. I mean, the rye is is a staple for us. Um. We we haven't even really talked about Slipknot yet, but uh, um, our collaboration with the band Slipknot. One thing that we we bring to the table there is a, a blend of bourbon and rye. So I mean, we we have to keep putting rye away at the very least just to fulfill that. But uh, um, we we obviously plan to do a lot more with our ride than just that. Um, the wheat whiskey, however, um, we like last year we did not mash any wheat whiskey. Um, we have quite a bit of it put away, and the reason we didn't mash any last year and may or may not this year is because uh, the market. I mean, there's not a lot of wheat whiskey buyers out there, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know we might empty ten to twenty barrels of it every year. So I mean. You know, if if uh, if eight years ago we put away, you know, a hundred barrels, that that's going to get us by for quite a while right now, just because we don't go through a ton of it. But it is actually really good. Um, it's you know, I, I recommend trying that wheat whiskey at some point. Um, I, I think it's it's one of our most slept on products. The uh, I love it. the nose on it is my favorite part. It depends on the batch, but sometimes I get like a fresh baked banana bread or even a little green apple in there. And it's just incredible, uh, uh, like very doughy. I love it. I had to hide that bottle because it was getting drank by too many people, the wheat whiskey. <laughs> Seriously. So it's hidden away in another place in the house now because people found it like, that's really good. I'm like, that's going to be put away now because it's almost gone. Yep. I got to try some of that. Every, every time somebody mentions banana anything on whiskey, I got to see if I can find it. I yeah, never that wheat whiskey is good. Big, big fan of uh, banana on the nose in whiskeys. I, I definitely enjoy that. I... And I would have no problem with it, but I have the hardest time finding it. Everybody says Jack Daniels, it's just yeah. banana, or um, what was it? Oh, Forrester, Old Forrester. banana. Yeah. I don't yeah. get it on either of them. I like that. Eric's plan do a double barrel wheat. That might be super interesting. That actually, I like that plan. Eric, we might we might have to do that one. Um, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll have to remember to to give you some credit for that down the road, but. Um, that, that could actually be a really cool concept. I'll to try to it also. Whiskey. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, okay. That I can get it on this. I can get the yeah. banana 100%. Yeah, this is a banana bread. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon. You're drinking the wheat right now? Is that the one you guys yeah. are drinking? Cinnamon, banana... I'm right, There's right. even like I'm a right. nuttiness. It's like that banana muffin I make with the yes. cinnamon crumble cinnamon crumble topping. on top. <laughs> yeah. I like it. delicious. Again, I like banana in general. Just never gotten it on a whiskey before. No. Yeah. Oh, but even the finish. It's like lingering, like lingering banana. That's very heavy into those notes. Apparently, we've drank this before, but we it's have. been forever. Because <laughs> uh, you got a lot of options. All right, yeah. it's a two ounce sample, so you know we've had it a couple of times. We've we've tasted through it, but I know it's been a while. I don't remember. Is that forty or forty three percent? This is 
Travis, you're exactly right. That's exactly what, what I was doing in my head. And I, I do remember you mentioning bottled and bond rye. Uh, this is 57.5%, actually. Wow, it doesn't drink that high. No. This drinks in the 40, 48, 50%. The, the wheat whiskey? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, we might we might have to do that, Eric. Um, I, I've been um, I've been playing around with some some wheat ideas. That's not the one that that I had, um, but that that might be even better. We'll we'll check it out. Um, I'll I'll tell you guys. I'm the one that that I've been thinking about. I'm mixing some or I'm blending. So this wouldn't be a category. It'd be a blended a blend of straights rather. But I've been thinking about blending some wheat whiskey with some peated single malt. Um, and then. Uh, potentially, we, we've got a couple barrels sitting around that once held peat and malt, and then finishing it out in those, and uh, calling it uh, peat and wheat peat. So, um, nice. we'll, we'll see. I like it. We I might, like it. I like it. Yeah, might <laughs> at some point. So that'd, be, that'd be kind of like in category of just like a blended scotch, where they're mixing in, you know, random yeah. other um, whiskeys. Yeah, yeah. Except for you know, not many people, not many people use wheat whiskey as a blending agent, and because it's extremely expensive to make, um, because mm -hmm. it's uh, malted winter white wheat, so it's a very expensive uh, nice. grain to work with. But I think it would be fun just to, you know, like I said, we don't we don't move a ton of wheat, and I think we can do some fun blends with it, and we might have to try it out. Yeah, so wheat and peat sound good too. Are you still making this malted rye at all? Because sadly, oh, yeah. it's almost gone. I need to um, get. Oh some yeah, that, that's uh, that is alive and well. You can still find. Okay, good. it. good. That is one of my favorite things you guys make. Because it's so hard to get. It's like I love this stuff. It's almost gone. <laughs> Do we have the rye over here? I don't know if we have the malted rye. <laughs> malted what rye? Cedar yep. Ridge straight rye. So good. Whiskey chaser pick. Hey Bill, thanks for your support, man. I appreciate that. Yes. Oh, awesome. this one's finished. Call them on the stream. Even better. Is that just a straight rye there, Matt? This one's the malt. I have the regular rye too. The regular rye is right here. This yeah. is this I've one's finished in a rye. barrel. Oh, that's a different one. And then I've got the uh, the, the Slipknot Iowa here too. Slow. Oh, the <laughs> Iowa label, yeah. Yeah, let's. I don't know. You want to talk about a little about this one because I've never really we haven't yeah. talked about this one much at all. Let's talk oh, about some yeah. Slipknot with you. How you guys got in contact with them and the whole Slipknot thing you guys are doing. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, so our, our partner with, uh, partnership with Slipknot has been a ton of fun. Um, so how that, how that came about was, um, they actually, their band manager reached out to us one day. We had just kind of a cold email that said, Hey, you know, I, I represent Slipknot. I mean, I'd be interested in sitting down with you guys. We're thinking about getting into the, the whiskey game a little bit and just wanted to meet and, and kind of get to know each other. And, um, so that came through and that actually went to my dad. And for for some crazy reason, my dad is um, the the only person on the planet, especially Iowa, who for some reason didn't know who Slipknot was. Um, oh, so, um, <laughs> that's hilarious! He almost deleted the email. He said that he was he was a click away from deleting the email, and oh at the last God. second, he sent it to our team of directors and said, "You know, is this something we'd be interested in?" And right away, I mean, the, the whole group was like, "Yes, yes, yes!" yes. You know, yes, like, we want to talk with Slipknot. <laughs> And obviously one thing led to another and um, clown came out and um, he and I had a really fun time tasting through a bunch of different barrels. And once we decided that we were going to work together, you know, we were working on blends together and different proofs and, and different concepts. Um, and it was just a ton of fun, man. He is a clown from Slipknot. I'm his, his hands down the most creative guy I've ever met in my life. Um, wow. Sometimes uh, when we, when we have like creative meetings with him, it, it's so fun to just, ask him a question and let him go for like 15 minutes. You know, you'll, wow. you'll go from talking about, you know, whiskey to like something that is like, now you're in outer space talking about how black holes work. I mean, like he just, he just goes. <laughs> the way his brain works is incredible. Um, he, he is so intelligent and creative. I, I really enjoy working with him, obviously. So anyway, um, that's what we did with them. And um, um, he came up with the concept to do Slipknot number nine, small batch. And okay. Slipknot number nine reserve. Uh, um, those are our two common or core items, rather, that we have released with them. But then last year, he wanted to do an anniversary label uh, for their Iowa label, um, an album that came out with a while back. And uh, so that's what this is. The the uh, um, label is actually the album album artwork. And uh, mm. up this one, we he wanted to kind of invert the uh, blend that we do for Slipknot small batch, which is. 60% bourbon and 40% rye. 
And so this is closer to uh, 60% rye, 40% bourbon. And Ooh. and I always tell people, I clown so kind good. of writes the recipe, and I usually cook to taste. So, I mean, if, if he says 60-40, it's somewhere within 5% of that range. Okay. Uh, I, I cook to taste to make sure that uh, we're, we're quality focused, obviously. But, yeah, so this one is a little bit more rye heavy than uh, – than uh, the standard slip knots that we do. And it's gotten pretty good reviews too. I'll see if I can it's find pretty bottle. great. Cheers. Yeah. Travis I'm says he got this bottle at Knot Fest. That's I'm, awesome. Oh, man. I'm sipping well, on a bottle of four, bottle four of and a half year old malted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm sitting on a, I'm sipping on a bottle of four and a half year old malted rye that spent two and a half years in New Oak and then two years in a Cedar Ridge port barrel. This yes. thing is tasty, tasty. Okay. Is that the uh, the whiskey chasers pick? Yeah, yeah, whiskey chasers pick. <laughs> so that is a uh, um, uh, of the items that are hunted from Cedar Ridge. That's easily in the top three. Um, that they, man, the wow. Iowa whiskey chasers. Uh, shout out to any of the Iowa whiskey chasers watching. Um, they have been incredible to our business and to uh, the whiskey market in the state of Iowa in general. They they truly moved mountains. But uh, they came out and they picked they picked out which barrel they wanted to transfer into which export cask and. So no mm. effort on, on my part or my team's part. They truly, they picked them and boy, did they do a great job um, because it's, it's one of the best right. releases we've ever had. Yeah. This is ridiculously good. Yeah. And we're not huge rye fans not in typically. general. Yeah. This is. Different. Um, and, and I think, I think I can say, yeah, we've, we've talked about it before. Um, So I, I, I'll go ahead and say it, but um, this year, later, later on in the year, we are going to release um, a, a batch of port cask rye that'll be throughout the Midwest and then available online. So um, oh, this, this particular, the one that you're trying that we did with the whiskey chasers, that's really what sparked it. Um, we saw such okay. a uh, market response and feedback from that product that we decided we wanted to do it on a larger scale. So uh, we do have that to look forward to later this year. Uh, I can understand awesome. why. This is amazing tasting. Add that to the list, Travis. I heard that. <laughs> and this is why you guys sell the most stuff in Iowa because of stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, it, it definitely helps to um, have people like Travis and everyone else in the chat group, and then people like you who, uh, uh, you guys who help spread the word and, and give us a platform to speak on. Um, it, it goes Absolutely. a very long way, and we're very appreciative. Hey, we always bring on distillers we think are doing a really good job and deserve to be on here. Mm-hmm. So we we just think that stuff's awesome and. I love promoting. We've been trying to work on this stream for like two years. In fact, it's funny. I have a, a old note that you gave Travis to give me when he came down here a couple of years ago with the sample file. From oh, no way. <laughs> yep, sure, I'll, I'll grab it. I've got it. It sits on my bar as a as a cool like little memento. And yet we have we have other distillers that are hounding down our door to get on our stream that we're just like, I'm sorry, I just. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I, I just, you're buying bad barrels, man. We've told you this. We've explained yeah. it to you. I just, I can't promote your product yet. You we, gotta, you gotta buy good barrels, buddy. We have yeah. been known to sell out um, <laughs> our fair share of store picks. Yeah. Um, that oh, people yeah. have had. So. <laughs> I have to go work on another one of those in a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's just, it's funny. Oh, okay. Yes, from the manager. Okay, it's by the apparently from Zach, the manager. Oh, um, oh, Zach. Uh, that might be Zach Ficken, or um, I, I'm I'm not sure, but uh, I hope it's a good note. I was thinking yes, when he it for me, note. I was like, man, I hope it's not a stupid note if he's gonna read it. Right now. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> yeah. Heard that, Bill. Uh, if I could get some more Andalusia up to my area, that'd be great. I sold them out of uh, Andalusia in the <laughs> DFW good, area. He's such a good rep. He sold them all out. <laughs> Can't get any in the warehouses. RNDC should have some more tomorrow. That's what I'm being told. So <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a good you know, thing. If, you if, do if your I job well. area full of whiskey first, and then I'll work on trying to get you some in Oklahoma. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can't even keep up with the Texas demand. He goes out, starts work for them, and sells all of it. It's like, well, shit. What do we do now? <laughs> I, I apparently I sold out specs, and I sold out RNDC. So I we I couldn't have account orders from. Oops. And really anything for a week or so there, but that's okay. I'm getting it back. I got it back. <laughs> um, and, and then Eric, uh, I'm on your subject in Wisconsin there. Um, if you don't see a massive push from us with from us in Wisconsin this year, uh, we have failed. Uh, we're we're working really hard in Wisconsin right nice. now. We have a full time rep there, so uh, you should see us at a lot of the a lot of those bars since there's 
uh more bars and taverns than grocery stores. You should see. Yeah, this you got. Yeah, Eric, you guys need to have this Cedar Ridge there at Mirage. Yeah, I mean, nobody really well, cares. You guys, especially you, the you know how they work, though, They're not going to bring it on if they can't taste it. So they got to get somebody from. True. Where, who's your distributor? Do you have a distributor in Texas yet? Uh, in Texas, yeah, we're working with RNDC. Yep. Okay. Well. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Problem solved. No, not really. The great thing about R and D C is you can get the bottle. That's what matters. Yeah. The great thing about R and D C is that they're massive and that everybody can order from them. The problem with R and D C is that they're massive and your small little craft thing gets just Mm -hmm. disappeared in their portfolio. So um unfortunately for for a craft distillery or an independent distillery or whatever you want to call I'm a privately owned distillery. Um what what they have to do is you have to have the funding to put in a rep wherever you're going to try to distribute um we've made the mistake and every distillery i know has made this mistake to you know we're gonna we're gonna field po's from every state that's gonna give us one and we'll have product everywhere but then what happens is the product it might not even make it to the shelf if it does it's just gonna sit there you have to have someone actually a full-time rep working that market I'm going out and making sales. I'm um, and then making sure that people buy it off the shelf too by doing tastings and stuff like that. If you if you have that, you're going to keep the wheels turning, and then all of a sudden the distributor is going to be more interested in your product because they're they're profiting from it. Their reps are getting incentivized from it. If um, if you don't do any of that, uh, your distributor is essentially just a glorified distributor or uh, a delivery service. You know, yeah. Um, so someone else has to convince a retailer to pick it up. And then, yeah, the distributor will drop it off there, but they're not going to go out and make that sale for you. You have to have a rep doing that. Yeah. Well, I can tell you with Mirage, um, he's saying, Eric's saying from Mirage that they can work with RNDC. We can sell it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, there's a the handful of people that, that are in just this little area that which in Matt, we live five minutes from Matt's house. And Mirage is what ten minutes, if that, if that from our house. Um, we tell them to go there. We tell them what to buy, and they buy it. Uh, and so it's one of those. If you get, if you are able to get your product in Mirage with with them, it'll sell. It'll sell sure. off the shelves. Good call. So that's just a matter of it getting down to Texas too. So no, absolutely, absolutely. And by the way. Um, I, I will. I will. I'm um, be in Texas at some point this year. I'm um, once a year. I usually do a little tour. I uh, hit, hit, you know, four of the bigger places down in Texas, and so I'm sure I'll be bouncing through at some point, and uh, we'll all have to grab a dram together. Please. Um, we can just all meet at Matt's house and have all the drams you want. Yeah. <laughs> a good point. All, all of the drams. You don't have to twist my arm. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Uh, okay. What is the, what's going on? Finally, she went to sleep. <laughs> See, yeah, Andy, Andy drives 3.5 hours to stop at Mirage. This is true. So he does. Know. Every time Andy comes to town, he always stops there. And but. generally when we say, because Eric's in a lot of our streams and we, we love seeing him here. and We promote their store because we love their store. It's a mom and pop store. Um, but we'll say, oh, okay, you have this. Okay, if you if you want it, you better go tomorrow, or you better call them yeah. right now and put a bottle on hold because it's not going to be there anymore. Yeah, because they sure. said sure. this is good and, and we like it, and you'll like it too. I like Mirage so much. I was at a whiskey. I was at a little liquor store. I found a bottle that I knew I needed to buy. I saw it sitting there on the shelf, and then I called up Mirage anyway and said, "Hey, do you have this one?" They did. I said, "Okay, cool." And I went over there, <laughs> drove out of my way, and went to see them instead. <laughs> Now, that's true for Travis. Travis is right. The first time Travis came to my house, I think he was stuck in the other room for two hours. My friends were like, what's wrong with him? He's just in shock and awe. He doesn't know what to do. We'll see him later. He's just standing there staring at the at the wall. Just like, like, is he in, okay? In I'm like, he's off. fine. He doesn't, he doesn't know what to do. I don't even know what to do with myself right now. Um, <laughs> that, um, I actually had um, a situation like that one time. Um, I was uh, um, I was working in New Jersey, and uh, um, I happened to somehow at like a networking event um, I ran into the president of the New Jersey Whiskey Guild, um, mm-hmm. and, and we were talking and, and having a few drinks. I um, mean, he's like, "No, hey, uh, you and the distributor rep you're working with, come back to my place tonight." And, and so we did. We went and we opened up the basement, his basement door to go into like his little man cave. And the the door to his basement is the red Maldini door that someone actually sent him, uh, <laughs> you know, from from their distillery. 
I'm in. So I knew it was going to be awesome. And I opened it. And I mean, it was just, I imagine like what you've got going there, just amazing bottles of whiskey everywhere. And, uh, <laughs> Um, it, it was one of those things too. I, I I had trouble walking out that night. I mean, there was, there, was, there were many good drams consumed, and uh, I can only imagine that it'd be very similar if I was ever able to get down with you guys. Yep, it's definitely yes. going to be one of those. Uh, you, have, um, you have a standing invitation if you come to Texas for sure. Take an Uber. <laughs> Uber I, I'm finishing Uber. up with a little bit of uh, peat and sherry, and my wife's finishing up with a little bit of chocolate and sherry. Time to All right. The Pete and Cherry, that was like my my first my first real love um, that I did at Cedar Ridge with American Single Mall. I think Travis was talking about it earlier. Um, but uh yeah, that Pete and Cherry. I wanted to I became fascinated with a couple different distillers editions from Lagavulin and Talisker, which are both Pete and Cherry, but oh, uh, they're good. um they're heavily heavily peated with um, a little bit of sherry finish. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to invert that. I wanted to go like sherry bomb with kind of a smoky finish at the end. So um, that's what I went for there. And, and we'll see if you, you find that on yours. Oh, absolutely. But the yeah. peat note is beautiful in here. It's nice yeah. and hefty still. I, I I enjoyed it the first time I sipped on it. I'm going to enjoy it again here in a second. Yeah, you it's know, so funny who have been here. Like, you know, Spencer's been here. He lives up in Nebraska and travels, of course, up in Iowa and any of them in Oklahoma. All these people come from out of town. They're like, yeah, yeah we we'll just get a hotel nearby. We always Uber because it's just safer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep, you know where to do it. You don't, you don't, you don't need to drive. It, no, that's a poor decision. Yeah. Unless you're going to come here, stop, drop something off, or pick something up. You, no, if you plan on drinking, you need to just either. Like, I only meant to have a little well, good. Now you can take an Uber home. Well, I, the the problem is, is that there's just too many things that are just. Oh shit! No, I haven't tried that one. Nope, shit, I haven't tried that one either. And then it just piles on and piles on and piles, and you go in the next room. And you're like, and you're oh, like fuck. holy shit. Yeah. yeah well, I tell you, like, come from the bar at the top of the stairs, and they're like, I'm like, oh, there's like three or four more rooms just like this. <laughs> like, oh, it's shit. It's been a while since I've actually been over to your house, Matt. Has, oh, has, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. It's so much worse. Oh, God. Okay. We got to wrap this thing up, guys. Uh, <laughs> Murphy, man, thank you very, awesome. very much for sharing your knowledge. Show. Thank you very, very much for sharing your time with us tonight. Um, I'm really excited to know or to see what comes out of Cedar Ridge in the future because oh, yeah. the things that we've had so far have been really, really wonderful. And I feel like your, your distillery is just getting better and better as it goes, which mm -hmm. is exactly what we want from these smaller guys. Um, you know, we just want improvement year after year. I don't care that the product isn't the same. I, yeah. If it's getting better, that's, that's you know, exactly what we're that's hoping exactly for. What we want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course you know the single malt movement. Yes, keep that going. Absolutely, we're we're happy that you're on board with that. I, and I definitely appreciate all the kind words. And um, once again, you know, thanks for thanks for having me on. Uh, thanks for thanks for doing this in general. Um, you know, creating a platform for uh, people to come come talk about their products and and for people to comment and interact. I mean, it, it's it's a ton of fun for everyone involved, and uh, it helps people do something that I'm very passionate about. That and and that's explore whiskey. Get out there and explore the world of whiskey there's so much to offer and uh i appreciate you guys allowing people to do that yeah speaking of exploring on, a... matt what do we got coming out this week let's see this week yeah. what do we talk about we have what the ivy mountain is that the one we talked about for tomorrow that's what's in the queue oh good that's what's coming out tomorrow then good and then the matsui i think is what for thursday what do we do for the liqueur this week i don't remember too many damn things we got liqueurs coming out on Saturdays. As yeah, always. that's all you need to know. And then next the next page. week is my wife's 40th birthday. So I won't be here, but I'm going to give a blind to Will and Sarah. That will be a really good fun blind of things uh -oh. they've never had. So that's always entertaining for them. And uh -oh. then we'll be back the following week with Amanda, who's the head distiller at Virginia Distillery. So another fun single malt night. So that'll be another awesome one. But, yeah, we'll have to definitely have you come back and do the, uh, the, the wine and whiskey. That'll be really fun. And they said we should have Clown come on. I don't know if he would be interested in doing anything like this. If he would, we'd love to have him. I think it'd be awesome to see this. You know, slip on night. I'm totally in for that. Um, yeah. Every now and then, you know, he, he frees up and he'll do some some stuff like that. He'll surprise you. Um, so maybe we can work that out. Um, if not, though, uh, uh, definitely the the wine and whiskey one. I think we can have a ton of fun, and uh, it, I think it'll be pretty educational for people too. So, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking for to do some of this for a while, so that's perfect. So, yeah, um, this has been awesome. We really appreciate having you on. You stay there for a few minutes, and we'll see everybody next week. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, all. Right. Cheers, all.